How's it going, y'all? Welcome to The Ed Show. I am your host, Nate, and the owner of Colorado Custom Leather and Blades. So, we are continuing our series on rusty blades. What happens? How do you fix it? Last week, uh, we talked about how you can fix it in the field with just simply boiling water and the correct method of how to do that. It's not just as simple as boil water because if you're using a direct flame, you got to be careful because if you're just sticking your blade in to that boiling water, but you have that flame kind of just wrapping around your can there or whatever your canteen is and it touches those scales, you're going to pop your epoxy. So anyways, I, I talk about how to do that safely, so go check that out. But this week, we're going to continue how to remove rust from your blade. Um, now, this is important because... If you're like me, you understand the benefits of a high carbon steel blade when it comes to bushcraft. I mean, in my opinion, I've talked about stainless steel on this on this uh, on the Edge show before, and it's 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 my opinion. I prefer a high carbon steel. I think there's better edge retention, and for the things that I'm into and the things that I make for the customers that are like minded, the high carbon steel blade is to go is to go to. I mean, my everyday carry self defense system is high carbon steel. Um, I mean, it's, it has better edge retention and longevity of that edge. So that's kind of basically what that means. But anyways, so we're going to continue this week. So if you, I'm going to do the intro now, but if you are somebody like me that uh, appreciates high quality steel blades, if you use them on the daily, live by them, and like me also make them, uh, welcome to the Edge Show. So uh, as I said, last week we talked about uh, how you can fix it in the field. If you're in the woods, hiking, hunting, fishing, whatever. And that's going to be important for the wild series that I'm designing right now. That hopefully I'll be starting to forge production um, prototype models in the next week. But um, <clears throat> so this is the blade we're going with. So I cleaned off this side entirely on the grinder. I did not re-oil it. I actually degreased everything or acetoned it. This side, we actually still got a little bit of rust and I light oiled this one. This side I did not touch. This has a natural patina from the method we used last week and this week. It is going to be a simple home remedy on how you can fix your rusty blade. Now, this is good for um, one of my favorite things to make with high carbon steel is chef knives, kitchen knives. Again, because of edge retention quality. Um, you know, this is where, you know, I can understand where stainless steel is the go-to. However, I'll say this. If you get a custom knife from a maker, never, regardless if it's high carbon steel, especially high carbon steel or stainless steel, Never, ever, ever dishwash that knife. Ever. People don't understand this. When you buy stainless steel knives from the store and you throw them in the dishwasher, they are not quality steel. That means the tempering is off and uh, it's not really tempered at all. It's probably pan metal. Um, and as soon as you put that in that dishwasher, when it's steaming... Well, go look at the science of what causes steam and what temperatures that has to be with to dry all your dishes. It's pretty freaking high. You're taking that temper out of the blade. So that's just a, that's just a pro tip for you guys. Uh, and that's some things you get here with the Colorado Custom Leather and Blaze community and the Edge Show. Um, so anyways, never wash your handmade knife ever. Stainless steel, high carbon, especially high carbon, don't do it. Um, but anyway, so let's say by accident, you know, you get your chef knife, um, that's high carbon steel and you didn't dry it off all the way and you go back and you have some nice little rust divots going through it. Easy fix. It really is. I'm going to show you how to do that. There's two methods and honestly, the, the, the second one is the best and I'm going to do before and after results because this is going to take at least eight hours to do on the second one. Okay guys, so uh, I'm also going to show you a tip, okay, on what will save you on even your stainless steel knives, but most likely your high carbon ones um, after we show you this trick. So uh, I'm going to show you on the non really rusted side because there's a little bit there. Well, it, it's, it's rust, but not as bad as that side. That side is horrible. So um, what you do is it's simple. You can take white vinegar or apple cider vinegar as long as it's vinegar and I would stay with either one of those and you can clean it off. So you're going to dip it. I'm using a shop towel right now um, and I'm going to use again this side and you're just going to scrub it. Okay. And if you look, there's already a difference. Now the easier method Shop towels are a little bit more aggressive, so let me show you with um, a regular just paper towel. Okay, I'm going to show you on this side now. So dip it. 
and you're just going to scrub it. Okay, so I went in this area only, so we're going to see the difference here. Okay, I'm going to dry it. Look at that difference here. Let me. So that was the other side with the shop towel. This is the side with the paper towel that you just find in your kitchen, and that's just a little bit of scrubbing. Um, you may have to zoom in on the um, befores or go back, but there is definitely a difference. But here's the easiest method. So um, I used to do etching with heating up vinegar, and I would put a patina on uh, on my blade that way. So with vinegar, it acts the same way. It'll eat that rust and it'll create that patina, okay? You're going to have to get used to patina knives with high carbon steel, and some even stainless steels over time will create a minor patina if you don't take care of them which I'll show you a method here in a second. So the easiest thing to do is you're just gonna dump this, you're just gonna set the blade in a vat of uh, apple cider vinegar. And here you go, look. Now you can leave it alone for eight hours, eight to 12 hours, and there will be a difference and we'll wipe it off and I'll show you guys the before and after. But real quick, let me show you what I mean here. So this is one of my favorite um, barbecue type style knives that I use to cutting up meat. Um, this was a stock removal knife that I did a while ago. This is high carbon steel and you can actually kind of see, and this is actually perfect lighting, this little black line, that's a patina. Okay, and here's the reality of any knife. When you're done using it, you want to wash it off, dry it entirely, and then put a coating of oil. Food grade safe oil, talked about that last week. I use baby oil, you can use olive oil, you can use uh, butcher's block uh, oil, food grade oil, and you're good to go. I would include doing that with your stainless steel knives. Um, but if you are a fan of the high carbon steel and you know what you're doing in the kitchen, a lot of chefs will, they, I mean, they'll go with high carbon steel. I mean, I know a few, I'm not going to say all, but I know a few that do prefer high carbon steel because of that edge retention quality. Um, I mean, a lot of Japanese chefs, um, sushi chefs and stuff that are actually in Japan, I mean, they mostly use all high carbon steel in the first place. They don't do a lot of stainless steel. Anyways, so with that being said, guys, you're going to see the next part of this video where it's the after eight hours. So we're going to fast through through time here. Well, it's not exactly the next morning. It is more like I just got home from work. It's been about 11, 12 hours. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look. And what we got here, I'm going to go ahead and start popping the lid. Created a patina, but let's go ahead and show you the next part and how you, how you do this thing. So, take it out. You can see it's, it's completely blacked out, even on the other side. Um, well, that rust wasn't too bad, it just wipes right off. But paper towel, give it a good wipe down, and you turn the rust into a nice, nice patina. And this is this is a good thing. This is uh, this is because this will help protect the blade in the future from rust. You still can risk it. But there you go. It's a darker color. That's what we want. That is that is that is technically a patina or it's etched and this again will give it some anti-rust properties and um, yeah so this is an easy way that you can, you know, chef knives or kitchen knives, whatever it might be, they're high carbon, a little bit of rust spots, this this can help you with that. Um, or your bushcraft knives, everyday carry knives, whatever. Um, it won't go exactly shiny, shiny clean. Uh, there's other methods we can get to that, which we're gonna we're gonna start talking about this next coming week, where we'll do another example how to get rid of rust and kind of polish it up. Um, to kind of get you that nice shiny steel again versus this, but this is the reality folks Knives regardless of, of Unless you're just buying them for the look and the and and that's it Okay, totally different. 
I would be upset if I got rust all over them. But I make knives for tools, and I use them according to that. Not every single knife has the same job. So if I have, let's say I did bring that in the backwoods, it's not exactly a bushcraft design, it's more of a self-defense design. Um, and that's actually what I was making this for, is a kind of boot dagger type deal, um, originally. But if that gets rust on it or whatever, it's a tool. What I'm caring about is that rust is gone. That's what's important to me. If it changes the color, again, it's a tool. I'm not going to cry. I mean, a mechanic's not going to cry when they get oil all over their hands or on their tools or whatever. They can wipe it off, but over time, it's going to have some slime and grime to it. It may even discolor it a little bit. It's part of having the tool. It's part of using that tool on the daily. I use, I want you, I want, I want, I'm going to challenge you all in the closing of this. For your everyday carry knife, regardless of what that is, okay, be it folding, fixed blade, stainless steel, high carbon, I want you to count an amount of, I want you to count in one day how many times you pull that knife out and use it. And I think you'll be surprised. And what I'm trying to get at is, if you're using a knife according to its job as being a tool for something, and again, if you're freaking out about rust or discoloration because it has a patina now because you got that rust, well, I don't think you're carrying a knife for the right reason. And that's my whole point of that. And that, that's why I encourage you, count how many times that you pull out your everyday carry knife, your folding knife, whatever you want to call it, and use it. Because I guarantee you, you're going to have to end up sharpening that. That's part of the wear and tear of that blade. So when you get rust on something like high carbon steel, even stainless steel, and you got to clean it off, it's okay. It's a tool. All right, guys. God bless. Keep your edges sharp. We'll see you next week.